How long is this going to take? Hey guys, my name is Doc Jade. If you haven't seen part one, or you've forgotten what happened last time, here's a quick refresher. Okay, now that you're all caught up, let's start working on explosives for cliff explosives. Speaking of which, there they are. Oh, and just for fun, every time an hour of playtime passes, I'll play this sound. I'll make some logistics robots. Then finish the explosives of Cliff. Good stuff. Now let's set up that diagonal rail base. I'm smart enough to know that this is a slightly bad idea, but I'm stupid enough to do it anyways. But thinking ahead just a bit, we're about to build a ton of roboports, and there's no way our current power production is going to keep up with that. So before we build any more rails, we should upgrade power production again. Okay, now we can start building more grid. Building a train base like this is super expensive up front, but it'll definitely pay off in the long run. Let's design the stations. Since the cells aren't super big, we'll just use one-to-one -one trains. Honestly, I like one-to-one -one trains probably a bit too much, but they do make sense for a base like this where there's a lot of one-off items. Also, I'm going to stick to one item per cell, which totally isn't a terrible decision that will lead to copper wire shortages later on. We should probably start enclosing some resource patches, but after removing the nearby biters, I realize the grid is perfectly aligned to overlap all of the ore patches. Luckily, we haven't built anything major yet, so I'll just tear it all down and start over. Our iron train is pretty darn slow, but it's mostly limited by inserter speed. So let's start researching stack inserters, then automate radars and passive provider chests. After upgrading the inserters and the steel smelting array, let's start pasting the new and unimproved grid. Since I don't want to cart coal around for all the smelters, I'll start researching electric furnaces. Then I'll build a second steel smelter, just because I feel like it. There's advanced material processing too. Next up would be worker robot speed, but this mod is actually a tad broken. You can queue the research, even though yellow science hasn't actually been unlocked yet. Fluid wagons it is then. There we go. Next up is substations. Very slowly, the rails are being built, and you know what they say, slow and steady wasn't built in a day. Substations, now for lab research speed 3. These biters are a spot on our perfect record, so after demolishing them and scouting out their neighbors, I'll take them out too. And more lab research speed. Man, poison capsules are awesome. I still can't believe I've never used them before. After heading home, I'll switch to researching laser turrets. I do need to eventually set up some walls, but I'll put it off a bit longer. Speaking of long-term projects, I'll set up solar panel production to stockpile it for later. Rail expansion is going well, but we're out of roboports due to a slight iron shortage. And I also need to sneak electric furnace production into here somewhere. There's laser turrets. Next up is laser shooting speed and damage. After finally finding a good spot for steel furnaces, I'll also set up laser turret and accumulator production. Now we need a blueprint for solar panels. At first I made a Z, then a box, then I tried a design which used medium power poles instead of substations, which looked pretty cool, but was not super practical. Neither of these had roboports in them either, so back to the drawing board. After shamelessly copying a QR code, there's laser damage and shooting speed. Back to lab speed. Then I filled in the rest of the solar panels and totally missed the ratio. But after a bunch of tweaking, I got it. There's lab research speed. I think I'll let the base chill for a bit. But not until I add a bit more steel production. It's really holding us back. I went to start pasting the solar tiles, but they don't actually connect at the edges properly. So yet again, I'll just steal a solar panel design from the internet. Now it's time for some wall designing. By now you should know that I like wacky wall designs, so since this base is already diagonal, let's make the walls diagonal too. But we're going to need flamethrowers for that, so let's research and set them up. This wall design is pretty decent, but it's not quite weird enough yet. Now that's more like it. 
After finishing up the design and surrounding the copper patch with rails, I'll start pasting down the bottom wall. We don't have quite enough steel for the roboports, and I accidentally forgot to limit radar production. I don't think we'll need any more for the rest of the run. Power production is doing okay, but it could always be better. Time to pace the northwest wall, but I will have to put some goofy turns in it to make it fit better. The walls take a lot of steel heavy items, so I'll up steel production yet again. But now we need to fuel the flamethrowers, so I'll set up a light oil train. But now I have to build rails all the way over to the walls, so time for even more steel. Building the wall will definitely take a while, but while we wait for that, let me tell you about today's sponsor. The wall blueprint actually has a single missing underground pipe, so now I have to run around and fix that. I updated the blueprint, which totally messed up the alignment, and man I'll tell you, I hate aligning blueprints sometimes. I'll go clear out the east side of the base so we can throw a wall over there too. But I should probably finish the west wall, even though it's pretty quiet on that front. Although power supply ain't looking too hot. We don't have quite enough coal, so I'll set up the coal cell, then set up a drop off at the starter base. Good out, good stuff. Okay, back to killing things. Now we can blueprint the wall. You can't see it, but you can hear it. Uh, okay, now you can see it. After blueprinting the rails over to it, I'll make a big loop with the rails because I feel like it. Power production isn't doing too bad, but I'll expand it again just in case. You know what they say, with great power comes great expandability. So let's set up the iron mine next. I didn't catch building the iron mine on camera, so here it is completed. Due to the way the grid is set up, the trains do have to wait to unload one at a time, but that's fine for now. So, what now? Well, we're still waiting on the walls to be built, but we don't have nearly enough robots. As usual, it's a lack of steel. Why is it always a lack of steel? By the way, I can't just cheese the entire game with logistics chests, since that's 30 sciences into the run. But more annoyingly, I can't request fuel for train stations. Oh well, I'll just keep working on the walls, complain about wall and stone production, surround a stone patch for later, then build a mine for copper. Good stuff. I'll build a drop-off and a train for it. After giving the train a pretty color, I'll set up the stone mine and a drop-off as well. Steel is continuing to steal my sanity, so I'll station a secondary iron supply train. Before we start setting up the sciences, we should probably build the labs first. After sorting the science chromatically, I'll set up all the science drop-offs. But before I could finish that, we almost entirely ran out of power. One of the trains ran out of fuel in front of the coal unloading station, so the boilers ran out of coal. After a bit of manual intervention, the base will slowly come back to life. Maybe I'll have to set up some nuclear power later. You may have noticed that we have just a few belts that need to be fed into the labs. At first I tried staggering the labs to feed it all in, but that was a huge waste of space, and most of the labs wouldn't be able to research anything anyways. Not to mention the terrible throughput. Then I tried a matrix of labs in a big square pattern, but once again, it would have had terrible throughput. I hopped into a testing world to try my hand at a few more designs, including belt weaving, which actually looked pretty promising. But as you could probably guess, the best solution is always the simplest. So ignoring that, here's sushi. Which is actually pretty convenient since I can use filter inserters to select which items to add to the system. So let's set those up. Although I'm not really sure how I would use inserter pulses to read the items going into the system. I'm pretty sure that would cause some issues. So instead, I'll just measure the items as they come in on the belts, 
then stuff it directly into the sushi loop. All placed down the labs, but we can't test the system until we have science to put into it, so let's finally get started on some. First, let's make some room for an iron smelting cell, and then build the said cell. Easy peasy, I'll mark it on the map, then duplicate the entire thing for copper. Some more rails, a steel cell, and a tight power budget later. We need to figure out how we're going to fuel all of the trains. For that, we're going to build dedicated train refueling cells, which unfortunately means every train will need to have a refueling stop in its schedule. Which isn't a huge problem, at least for now. Now for the fan favorite ingredient, iron sticks. I'll totally overbuild production for them, then expand the grid even more. I lied about setting up science production, by the way. Let's do rails first. I'll pick another pretty color for the steel train, then paste down the assemblers for rail production, which I totally didn't forget power poles for. In theory, everything should be ready to go, but we don't have enough belts or splitters. So I'll make some more in the old base. I thought about making Amazon warehouse cells for easier item distribution for the robots. But then I realized that idea sucked, so I abandoned it. After stealing stick production, we can switch it over to gears. Then I'll expand again for the 4 trillionth time, remember oil exists, then set up oil mining. And with mining comes refining, so here's a water train, some tanks, and a totally unrelated shot of me setting up some brick smelting. Now time for the actual refineries, but since we're already using two sides of the grid cell to input the water and oil, we'll have to use a second grid cell to output all of the oils. I'm also making lubricant here, but technically I'm not breaking the one item per cell rule, since lubricant isn't an item, it's a liquid. Slight problem, if both the drop off and pick up for a train is disabled, the train will get stuck at the refueling stations. Definitely a really bad issue, but as usual, I'll just ignore it until it becomes a real problem. It's been over two months since I first recorded this footage, so here I genuinely have no idea why I'm setting up belt production instead of, I don't know, science? Then I built some solar and another iron mine. I'm definitely procrastinating. I have a feeling that loading trains is going to be a bottleneck long term, but there's nothing we can do about it for many, many hours. Oh well. Skipping past some more random pointless crap, let's finally get started on science. First up in chromatic order is military science, so we'll do it first. Walls, grenades, and red ammo. Walls are pretty easy, since we already set up stone brick production. Next up are grenades, which are so simple I marked them on the map before I even built them. Now for yellow ammo for red ammo. Easy peasy. I managed to forget to give the stone train a butt, and I forgot to give it a refueling delay. After giving it a gluteal augmentation, I'll build a bypass, because Mr. Posser said so. I'll also add another refueling station. Red ammo is up next, and then another power upgrade. Oh, hi again. After fixing Stone Bricky McBrickface's schedule, let's finally set up the military science cell. We'll need a couple more trains for all the deliveries, and then the science train. Not all of the sciences will fit into one train, but we'll fix that later. But you know me, I can't seem to stay on task for more than 12 consecutive seconds, so I'll go and improve one of the iron mines. We're actually starting to get attacked on our walls, but the flamethrowers aren't quite doing the job, so I'll cue some flamethrower and laser damage. After improving the iron mine and finishing the two researches, I finally get back on task to military science. I'm not really too concerned about keeping proper ratios, so 16 assemblers feels like a good number. A few belts and chest limits later. Finally, the first science of the rail base. Train loading speeds are already a pretty major bottleneck, but like I said earlier, there's nothing we can do about it. Also, trains keep stopping at the refueling cells, but that'll clear itself up if we can keep them busy. So here's another iron smelter. This base is definitely going to take a while to ramp up to full speed. Iron and steel supply is definitely holding us back. Luckily, I can always just build more. Oh yeah, oil cracking. I should probably finish that. There's heavy to light and light to petroleum. 
There's yellow ammo. Soon we'll actually have something to deliver to the labs. I named all the science stations the exact same thing, which was stupid, so I'll number them starting from zero, because all of the cool kids start from zero. Since stations are arranged from left to right, the pathing is a bit strange, but whatever. Now for the actual sushi logic. The memory cell is exactly the same as it was in the sushi video. Then we isolate the signal, negate it, and add how many of each item we want in the system. If the result is positive, then we set the output strength to 1 to set the filters on the inserters. Works like a charm. And I'll add one more combinator to easily set the science multiplier. Speaking of science, military has stopped. All of the refueling stations are full, resulting in an invisible deadlock. So it's time to build some more refueling cells. I'll just splice the coal off the starter base. Hopefully that'll help. I'll go ahead and build a few more, then military science finally got its first load of red ammo. Oh, I forgot to set the filters. Let's try that again. Looks like the sushi is working correctly. I'll increase the multiplier. Next up is raw science, copper and iron ore. I'll add it to the train schedule, then fix the filters again. Slight issue. Since the filter inserters can only filter for four items at a time, the numbered science gets outranked by the vanilla science, but I fixed this by disabling the sciences we don't have yet. Once again, the walls aren't doing too hot. Y yes they have flamethrowers, but that's not what I mean. Time for more flamethrower damage. More science! Next is automation science packs, which are also super easy. There's flamethrower damage. Time for some more laser shooting speed. When that finishes, there's automation science. Time for another level. Next up is logistics science, but for that we're going to need green circuits. So time for a copper wire cell. This feels awful. It may be stupid, but at least it's stupid. Laser shooting speed. Time for even more flamethrower damage. Another hour, another grid cell. This one is for green circuits. Flamethrowers again, more laser shooting speed. Having one copper mine sucks. Let's build another one. Now let's set up plastic production. If you think the order I'm doing stuff in makes no sense, you would be absolutely right. Now let's set up red circuits, because why not? Laser shooty speedies, time for some more damage. There, red circuits. Now can we please get back on track? Thank you, let's set up inserters. The nice thing about grid-based designs is you can constantly steal setups from yourself if you're like me and don't care about ratios. Remember that copper mine we just built? I lied, I never finished it. There we go. I'll needlessly expand some more, then set up the logistics science cell. It's crazy that we already have 42 trains. Next up is basic logistics science, splitters and burner inserters. After setting up Tom Clancy's splitter cell, I did nothing for a solid hour. A lot of bots are waiting on red belts, so I'll throw that down. Then I'll whip together burner inserters and a cell for the science. Two hours and some missing footage later, let's get started on basic military science, which takes submachine guns and yellow ammo. I started working on the submachine guns, but then power died again, which made me realize I never plugged these steam engines in. The base's iron supply is really lacking, so I'll set up yet another iron mine. This one is extra big, so hopefully I won't need another one for at least five minutes. The splitter cell finally got its first delivery of belts. And the submachine guns would be running if it wasn't missing long inserters. I finished setting up basic military science off camera. Next I'll do electricity science pack, which takes lamps, boilers, and offshore pumps. Automating these stone furnaces for boilers is easy, but it does make my soul hurt. Next is pipes, then the boilers themselves. Lamps are easy, and finally offshore pumps. Then for the science itself.
Since power keeps going out every night, I'll set up a solar panel cell and paste the solar blueprint a few more times. Then we can start working on defense science, which takes walls and turrets. We already have walls, so after throwing down turrets, we're basically done. Now for improved automation science, which takes steel furnaces and assembly machine tubes. First up is the assembly machines, which take the same ingredients as inserters. Convenient. But the level 2 variant takes 4 ingredients, which means we're going to need a bigger cell. So I'll remove one of the intersections and turn it into a double wide cell, which will give us room for 6 train stops. It is a bit silly taking up this much space for just one item, but whatever. Man, power is still struggling. I'll have to build some more solar panels later. After configuring the trains and setting up the stations, there's assembly machine 2s. Now for steel furnaces, which we already have all the ingredients for. Then the science. I don't want to keep relying on the starter base for things, so I'll tear out all of the labs and all of the assemblers related to science. The bots are cramming everything into just a few chests, which looks ugly, so I'll give them a ton of room to spread out the items, then deconstruct the old chests. Very nice. But what isn't very nice is assembler production hasn't gotten a single delivery yet, and I accidentally built the input to steel furnaces in the output. This base has a lot of buffers to fill, so things just take a while. But that doesn't excuse the lack of coal for steel science, so let's go get some more. But it turns out the base isn't slow, I'm just dumb. I accidentally set the circuit condition to copper wire instead of pipes. Next up is Assault Science, Red Ammo and Grenades. Sweet, we've already got both of those. Now for Fast Inserters. We'll need them for Improved Logistics Science. Speaking of Improved Logistics Science, there it is. Just Fast Inserters and Red Belts. Next is Programming Science. Just Red and Green Wire. Super, super easy. Then energy distribution science, which takes medium and big power poles. Luckily, medium and big power poles take the same ingredients, so I can just swap the recipes. After finishing that up, railroad science is next, which takes cargo wagons and rails. Super easy, if not a little iron heavy. After making some more green circuit trains and iron smelting cells, we need even more refueling stations. I'll check them over here. Skipping a few sciences, I'll work on bulk transfer science, which takes stack inserters and filter stack inserters. No idea why I'm working on it right now, I don't even have that science unlocked yet. Back on topic, next is automotive science, which takes cars and concrete. So here's engines for cars, cars for cars, and concrete not for cars. Speaking of concrete, I don't like paving my bases, but I'll at least put it under the labs. After adding all the trains I was missing, I took a look around the base and noticed that iron ore supply is low. It mostly seems like it's a train loading speed, but I'll add some more iron ore trains just in case. Time for automated railroad science. Train stops take four ingredients, so it's time for another double wide cell. This looks even dumber than the assembler cell. Now for the rail and chain signals. Then the science. Only two more sciences to go until we're back to where we were before moving to the train base. Both of them require sulfur, so let's set that up. Just liquids, nice and easy. First up is chemical science, red circuits, sulfur, and engines. Then petrochemical science, sulfur, and plastic. After adding the stops to the science train and being confused about something I cannot remember, we get to play a fun game of Spot the Iron Bottleneck. Can you spot the bottleneck? If you guessed copper, Please see a doctor. The next science is terraforming science, which takes cliff explosives and rockets. Might as well set it up right now while we wait for science. 
Funnily enough, I considered using just barrels instead of fluid wagons in this run, but I decided it wasn't quite funny enough to be worth the effort. Next up is Klabloomy Explody Sticks, which are quick and easy. Rockets aren't actually researched yet, and we don't have all the science yet. Luckily, we can steal the science we had left over from deconstructing the old labs. After popping those into the labs, there's rocketry and terraforming science pack. After that is green science, which takes solar panels and accumulators. Also, some of the science was in the wrong order, so I fixed that. I'll set up sulfuric acid for the batteries for the accumulators for the green science we just researched. Next up is Capsule Science Packs, which take Poison and Slowdown Capsules. I'll cue it. Now for the batteries, but my trains are starting to have a hard time pathing around. Hopefully the traffic jam clears itself up. Anyways, copper and iron plates later. There's batteries. Now for the accumulators, nice and simple. Back to terraforming science. Rockets. I'm glad I checked in on the trains again. I wonder how long this gridlock has been going. A couple signal swaps later, good as new. Just in case, I'll build another alternative route and then make another deadpan joke about bypasses referencing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Turns out I totally messed up explosives production and put the inputs straight into the outputs. I'm glad I caught it before I set up the explosives train. After fixing that, let's finish cliff explosives. Then copy, paste, swap, and that's terraforming science. Now for green science. The refueling stations aren't getting quite enough coal, and that's because we're consuming all of it trying to battle this endless power shortage. Time for more solar. Let's design a new refueling cell that has coal delivered by train, so we can paste them down easier. Then I'll pepper them throughout the base. Still waiting on science, there's a lot of missing one-off items like turrets. And assemblers still haven't even gotten their first gear shipment. Even simple things like green and red wire are missing copper wire. I'll build more production. Also, we have a light oil shortage, which is caused by a normal oil shortage. Which is just slow. Luckily, there's another patch up here. I'll go set that up. After fixing some misconfigured train stations, fixing train schedules, and worrying about copper wire supply, I realized we should probably rush towards productivity modules to make the science cheaper. Also, it turns out there's a module science pack. Fun. Time for another copper mine, this time with a slightly wackier loading design. Finally, there's capsule science. Next up is modular armor science, because I completely forgot about what I just said about productivity modules. Okay, scratch the goofy loading design. Let's replace it with a more standard silly loading design. That's better. And there's modular armor. Now for personal solar panels. Oh yeah, I forgot about capsules. Let's finish those and their science. Easy peasy, but I accidentally skipped Science 18, Bulk Transfer Science. Let's finish that real fast. We already set up the stack and filter inserters, so we just need the science cell. Speaking of science, we've finished at least 20, but only 9 are being produced and used in the labs. As usual, they're just waiting on boring intermediates. Mostly iron-based ones right now. So, time for more gears, green circuits, and copper trains. Then I'll fix even more broken train stations and add more copper production. But really, it's just a waiting game for now. Still need more iron. Time for yet another iron mine. And another smelter, because why not?
the game is starting to get a bit stuttery, but hopefully it's just a fluke. Science is looking a lot better. All we're missing now is 7-Eleven, 13, and 14. Soon research will start back up. I think it's mostly a steel shortage. And power too. The train's deadlocked around the cold drop-off again. After shuffling the signals around, that hopefully should fix it. The game is continuing to get more laggy, and it looks like that's because the trains are constantly repathing, which is a pretty expensive operation. So, let's redesign the intersection to use less signals, which should also cause less pathing updates. But I also need to make sure it still fits within the grid we've already built. I don't want to completely tear down the rail base. So, we need to keep at least this outer edge of each intersection. We can also reduce the number of candidate paths for the trains to pathfind through by removing all of the left turns from the base. Yes, that sounds weird, but it should work. After a quick test fit in the real base, let's tear out all the rails. Before we do that though, we need to move all of the trains out of the base so we can deconstruct the rails under them. So I'll build a massive holding station. The easiest way to do this is to build a massive stacker with no output and tell all of the trains to go to that station. Conveniently, all of the trains already have a refuel stop in their schedules. So I can just put a refuel station at the end and disable the train limit. Then I'll disable all of the other refueling stations. Now we just need to wait for all the trains to filter in. After double and triple checking that we got every single train, I'll start deconstructing all of the rails and their signals. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Whatever. Happy New Year, by the way. Without cold trains, the base doesn't have nearly enough power to keep the robots happy, so I had to start force-feeding the boilers wood. It doesn't last very long, but at least it's something. Surprisingly, deconstructing all the rails only takes around an hour and a half. Time to start placing the new ones. Hopefully this works. Due to the lack of left turns, there might be some literal edge cases to deal with, but we'll get there when we get there. I'll slowly start reintroducing trains into the system, and fill in the gaps. Luckily, this blueprint book has a diagonal T-junction, so I'll use that on all the edges. The edges get a little right turn as a treat. While I was minding my own business expanding the rail network, I was very rudely hit by a train. After scraping my corpse off the tracks, back to work. I'll add some more trains into the network. Right now I'm focusing on getting all the coal trains back into the system. I should probably pull out the science train too. After eventually dumping all of the trains back in, I'll deconstruct the stacker. With the base almost fully reconstructed, except for a few hundred signals, I'll fix a few minor hiccups, which are mostly just fueling related. Like delivering wrong items to the station. Still missing 7 Eleven, 13, and 14. 7, also known as Improved Automation Science, is missing level 2 assemblers, which are just waiting on green circuits at this point. I'll get the science train unstuck, then I'll make some more rail signals to hopefully fix some weird traffic jams. The base is slowly recovering, but we're still not quite back to pre shutdown levels of activity. And the iron mines are starting to dry up a lot earlier than expected, so I'll bump mining productivity to the front of the queue. Even though we totally don't have enough science for it. I'm going to start manually scheduling trains to drop off the items that are holding back science, like green circuits for the assemblers. Two hours later, we've finally got some progress on research. Almost halfway done researching mining productivity, I make the completely harebrained decision to cancel the research? I have no idea why I thought that was a good idea. To further show how stupid I was, here's me dying to a stopped train. I need to stop playing at 2 in the morning. Spiders killed one of my bots, which bothered me a lot more than usual for some reason. So I went ahead and annihilated them. After alleviating all of my stress, I'll paste down some more refuel stations and do maintenance on the iron mines. We should probably get more. Better now than never. Also, I finally found my metaphorical marbles, so let's switch back to mining productivity. But we're missing automotive science, which is missing cars, which as usual is indirectly caused by a lack of iron. 
Speaking of iron, let's finish up that wall and set up a mine. But my thirst for iron is not quenched, so we'll expand east as well for this even bigger iron patch. Much carnage later, the ore patch is finally contained. Until it wasn't. After recontaining it, let's set up that mine. As usual, another slightly weird loading design, then I'll connect the rails. And there we go, a ton more iron. Still need more power though. That huge bump in ore production should hopefully speed up the base a bunch. But our constant lack of power is definitely holding us back. So I'll dump all the wood into the boilers and replace the tail end of them with a more compact power setup. Is this going to work long term? Probably not. just waiting on automotive science packs, which are waiting on cars, which are waiting on engines and steel, and the engines are also waiting on steel. After almost an entire hour without a steel delivery, I'll just send a train over there manually. It turns out we just didn't have enough iron plate delivery trains. They're all busy, so I'll make a few more. Finally, engines for cars, cars for automotive science, and automotive science for the labs. I'll increase the science multiplier again. Engines also finally got delivered to chemical science. I switched the research from mining productivity to productivity modules. I'm not sure if this was a bad or a good idea, but at least it means the labs will be more efficient. The science train ran out of fuel completely. I guess its delivery route is getting pretty long. There's modules and productivity modules. Let's make some of them, shall we? We'll need them for science later, so might as well go big. Although somehow we're still in a copper wire shortage, which is killing green circuits. Really? Copper wire? Whatever. After snagging and stuffing some circuits in, we've got productivity modules. Obviously, first up is the labs, and then I'll start throwing them into the science production, too. Back to mining productivity. Next up is bulk transfer science, and as soon as it's done, I can set the recipes in the cell I already set up for it. Although neither normal or filter stack inserters are ready yet. And a lack of green circuits is the culprit. Probably still a lack of copper wire, so I'll build more trains for that. Checking in on green science, not logistic science, we're still waiting on accumulators, which are waiting on batteries, which is waiting on sulfuric acid, and yada yada yada, we need more oil. I'll fix that later. Cliff explosives are waiting on barrels, which just have a misconfigured train station. Easy fix. The steam engines are just devouring our coal supply, so I'll replace them with solar panels. Will I eventually rebuild them? Uh, probably. There's not really any more room for solar panels, but power is still struggling hard. Maybe I'll reconsider building a nuclear reactor? Regardless, we're going to need the uranium for science later, so might as well start mining it now. Which reminds me, we're still in a sulfur shortage. I should probably fix that. I can cheat a little by plugging in our old oil supply, but I'll at least plug it into one of the oil mines so it still has to go on a train. Science stopped. What are we missing? I forgot to isolate the sushi circuit from the main base power supply, so it looks like the count drifted a little bit. Very familiar. So I'll do the smart thing and isolate the circuits onto a separate power grid. After resetting the count, we're good as new. Apparently, I didn't think engine production was fast enough, so I tore it down and built it better. Side note. Uranium processing. Just for future reference, uranium science packs take both uranium-235 and 238. Once the engine redesign is finished, I'll check in on stack inserters. Yep, still need more green circuits. Remember sulfuric acid? Yeah, me too. We're in a pretty horrible oil shortage, and the next viable patch is just down yonder. 
So, time to expand again. And we should probably get back to work on modular armor science, which is actually super fast. Anyways, I'm going to slowly work my way downwards and systematically take out the biters. Right after I automate personal solar panels. There's modular armor science. I took a quick peek at the research tree to see how far away personal roboports were, and it turns out you need to make construction robotic science first, which takes construction robots and roboports? You've gotta be kidding me. Oh well, I'll cue it. Pushing with flamethrowers is a bunch of fun, and also slightly risky. Maybe I should try using defender robots for expansion pushes. Could be cool. I can only have five follow me at a time, but researching five more is pretty cheap, so I'll do that. Actually, might as well automate them. I bet we'll need them later anyways. How about another level? After making slightly more than a few defenders, I'll go try them. I mean, they're not terrible, but I'll definitely need a lot more if I want them to be useful. Also, fire is hot. You should remember that, because I don't. These biter bases are pretty big, so I'll abandon the slow and steady strategy and just go straight for spam. After peeing fire onto a few more biter bases, the biters eventually decided it was nap time. So I upgraded the refineries and started drilling for that sweet, sweet oil. which apparently woke up the biters and started what I can only describe as a Wikipedia edit war. Anyway, we've got more oil, and I'll throw productivity into the refineries too. I'll research some more energy weapons damage because I feel like it. Then I remembered we make rockets for terraforming science. I'll switch the research to stronger explosives, then try taking out some of the biters that are a bit too close to the wall. The rockets kind of suck, so I'll research even more explosive damage. The rockets are pretty nice against nests, though. We're currently at 93% evolution, getting pretty close to bigger swarms of behemoth biters, so it's better to prune these nests now rather than later. Okay, back on topic. Screw personal roboports, let's get more inserter capacity bonus. I have a slight feeling that loading and unloading trains is still the biggest bottleneck in the base. Also, I forgot how unbelievably broken laser turret creeping is. I should have done this earlier. After fixing the science train filters to let it actually deliver the newer science, I checked in on bulk transfer and green science packs, which are both finally starting to run. Good stuff, now we can finally start researching again. Just as I predicted, I'll tear down the solar panels and replace them with steam power again. But it barely seems to help. Finally, inserter capacity. I'll queue it until we hit a science we don't have yet. In this case, production science. There's level two. Science delivery is starting to become a problem. The round trips take a long time and the train keeps running out of fuel. So I made more science trains to speed up delivery. There's level three. Now let's get started on production science. The only ingredient we don't have set up yet is electric furnaces. So there's not much to talk about. We could talk about all the times my dad beat me senseless with a set of jumper cables, but the biters are starting to overpower the walls in a few areas, so I'll cue more laser damage. There's the furnaces, and after finishing the cell for the science, I'll add it to the trains. Energy weapons damage four. Now for basic module science, which takes efficiency, productivity, and speed modules. A little copy and paste later. There's speed modules, and then efficiency modules. Then I'll cue the science. Actually, hold on. We never finished modular armor science, so time to automate modular armor, and then accidentally set up portable solar panels for a second time. Not gonna lie, automating modular armor hurts my soul a little bit. Oh well. Time to set up the assemblers for basic module science. They're pretty expensive, but at least we get 10 items per craft. 21 new sciences down. Next up, blue circuits. We'll need them for utility science. As usual, a very simple design. Then onto low density structure. 
Taking a look at iron supply, there's a very suspicious dip. Turns out one of the trains tried pathing to a pickup that was already reserved and got stuck. Let's finish the low density structure. Then we'll research utility science and set it up. Next up is electric engines because I said so. Might as well research some braking force. A faster train is a happier train. Now that the electric engines are done, we can start working on flying robot frames. You know, I'm starting to think that I shouldn't have gone for a rail base. It sure is easy to build and expand, but it's kind of boring. Breaking Force 2 is done. I'll research rocket fuel next. Anyways, robot frames take four ingredients. So after throwing together yet another double wide cell, I'll make new trains for the items. Speed Module 2s are next for no specific reason. Electric engines are waiting on, yet again, green circuits. Let's build some more. Productivity 2 is next, followed closely by Efficiency 2. Production Science is waiting on productivity modules and electric furnaces, which are both waiting on green circuits. I still think the issue mostly boils down to not being able to load and unload the copper wire to and from the trains fast enough, but we can't improve it until we make some more Production Science. Since modules are so expensive, I'll take a little detour to modern defense science instead. All I need to set up for it is laser turrets. That was a lot faster than expected. I'll cue propulsion science as well. There's laser turrets and propulsion science. I'll resume construction robotics science, which didn't take very long. After making a new and arguably unimproved refueling station, I conducted a deeper investigation into the copper wire shortage. Turns out it's not quite a copper wire shortage. It's more of a copper ore shortage. So I'll give this mine a second station. But I bet this won't be quite enough, so I started looking for new patches to expand to. But the biters have evolved quite a bit, and expanding with those wavy diagonal walls is almost as hard as uploading a video on time. So sadly, I'll abandon them for convenience and go with a flat chunk aligned one. So, after designing the new wall and some roboports to go along with it, let's secure this copper to the east, although it did get off to a pretty rough start. After getting my body back and very carefully dying, The wall expansion went pretty smoothly, except for all of the times I died. I'm slowly clearing out the entire inner area, so I'll add a temporary wall to prevent the biters from re-expanding into where I've already kicked them out from. But man, it takes a while for the bots to get there. Also, lasers are missing batteries, but I can just force a delivery. And yes, I know about the misconfigured assemblers, I fixed them later. The wall is going pretty well, but the copper mines are starting to look drier than my phone, so I'll enclose this patch here a bit early. Since I don't really have anything to put into this new empty space, I'll fill it with solar. Man, these bots are stupid. Whatever, let's get started on that copper mine. I'll reuse the loading design from the iron mine next to it. Looks good to me. And all those solar panels I added finally fixed our power issues. Now that the copper economy is looking bullish, we can expect a rise in green circuit production. Is what I would say if I was lying. Using every ounce of logic instilled upon me by the United States public education system, I built more red circuits instead of more green circuits. Why did I do that? Since we're mass producing modules, might as well start throwing them into whatever random thing I feel like. First I'll put them in every steel smelting cell, then green circuits, red circuits, low density structure, and science. Except all of the modded sciences don't allow productivity modules for some unforsaken reason. 
That seems like a bug. Whatever. Blue circuits and engines later? I felt I might as well expand the southern wall a bit, too. There isn't any ore or anything down here, so I'll just place more solar. Still waiting on mining productivity and more inserter capacity bonus. Purple science is still waiting on red circuits, which is actually being held back by plastic production now. But that's nothing a few prod modules and chemical plants can't fix. I'll also put productivity into the entirety of the oil processing chain. There is some more oil out to the east. M might as well, right? The expansion went pretty smoothly. Now I just need to make the oil pick up. So I'll splice it onto the iron patch. I also decided to put productivity in all of the iron furnaces because, well, why not? I built the oil loading station backwards, but instead of flipping it around, I'll just add a loop-to-loop. After adding even more oil refineries, that should hopefully keep plaster production up to speed. That seems to have helped. Now we can shift our focus to utility science, which is currently lacking blue circuits and flying robot frames. The frames are waiting on electric engines, which is actually just missing inserters. And production science finally got some productivity modules. A bit later, electric engines finally made their way over to robot frame production. Sweet, sweet utility science. Finally, research can start again. Mining Productivity 2 and Inserter Capacity Bonus 4. Let's do Bonus 5 and Breaking Force 3. I either never finished Modern Defense Science or I'm building it a second time here. I can't remember. That's Science 23, but we never unlocked Science 22, Warfare Science. So let's queue tanks and explosive rocketry. Then let's set up rocket fuel. First up is Solid Fuel, Breaking Force 3. Then the rocket fuel itself. I put productivity in both, since I'm a bit suspicious on whether oil will be able to keep up long term or not. With rocket fuel done, we can set up propulsion science, which just takes low density structure and rocket fuel. Next up is modern automation science, which also needs automation 3. Getting around the base is starting to take forever, even with trains, so I'll queue exoskeletons, personal batteries, and power armor. Then I'll increase the science multiplier for the sushi, since the science isn't quite making it to the last couple of labs. There's Automation 3, and before I forget, I'll throw some more Train Breaking Force into the research queue. Exoskeletons, personal batteries, even more Breaking Force, and Power Armor. After making a set, I'll throw in the Exoskeletons. It would be nice to have personal roboports, but we don't have enough sciences finished for them. With my new Exoskeletons, I'll go check on Basic Module Science, which is still waiting on speed and productivity modules. So, completely unrelated to that, I'll upgrade Petroleum Cracking. Inserter Capacity Bonus 7, then Breaking Force... Get it? 4? Breaking Force 5. I started fighting the Biters again, for no other purpose than to just kill time. I'm 100% procrastinating again. And skipping 6, there's Breaking Force 7. Time for a bunch of refined flammables and laser shooting speed. All of that biter fighting wasn't completely useless though. I have a feeling we're going to need more room for production soon. Refined flammables 4. Might as well also enclose this copper patch to the east. One of the science trains ran out of fuel again. I'll split up the train schedules in a minute. But for now, I'll build even more refueling cells. Iron production is slowly starting to sag, so to make it last even longer, I'll throw productivity modules into the entire mine. Okay, let's separate the science delivery trains into their own separate trains for each station. Pulling the old trains out of the network was fun, since I had to move thousands of science into the labs. But eventually, I finished all of the new trains, which should stop them from running out of fuel and speed up delivery as a nice side effect. After hand delivering some red circuits to productivity module production, I'll force the delivery over to basic module science. Yet again, I forgot to set the inserter filters. Now we can research tanks and explosive rocketry. Let's set those up. First up is explosive rockets, which, crazy as it might sound, takes rockets and explosives. Since they aren't unlocked yet, I'll just leave the assemblers blank. Then I'll reserve a spot for Warfare Science, then mislabel it and Explosive Rockets. 
Now for tanks, which are just ridiculously steel heavy. They also take four ingredients, which is totally a waste of space for just tanks, but whatever. Surprisingly, all of the ingredients were delivered pretty quickly. But you know what isn't quick? This segue. To us needing more oil. Production of sulfur and sulfuric acid has been all over the place. Luckily, there's another oil patch just south of us. Which is good because we are currently consuming oil as fast as we are making it. So, time for more walls and more biter battles. Enclosing the oil wasn't too bad, I only died two halves of one time. But eventually, I started hooking up the pump jacks, which I just directly hooked up to the other oil patch to save time. Then I saw this massive iron patch to the west, and I just knew I had to get it. After adding two more oil trains and improving pipe throughput, oil production is looking a lot happier. I even had to improve the water loading to keep up. Back to that iron patch, I finally started to surround it, but there are some pretty big biter bases nearby. But I eventually got the entire thing surrounded. Sure does take a long time for the bots to deliver stuff all the way out here though. You know, might as well wall off this entire right side too. The lake is pretty convenient. There's warfare science, then modern automation science. Next up is efficiency module twos, then beacons. We'll need them for effect transmission science packs, which is queued now. After that finishes, I'll do more laser upgrades. The expansion is slow work, but overall I think it's going pretty well. With the laser upgrades done, I'll queue gates and landmines just to get them out of the way, then uranium and logistic robot science packs. The first three finished pretty fast, but logistics robot science is going to take a while. The robots are taking a direct path into a biter nest again. Yay! I'm tired of listening to them die, so I'll turn off alert sounds. The southwest wall is almost done, and I think I'll put the bottom of it right here. The most annoying part is clearing out the middle before the biters decide to expand again. It's very slow work. Now we just need to wait for the walls. Remember the explosive rockets? They still haven't gotten a single shipment of explosives. So let's upgrade explosive production. Maybe even a little bit too much. Then I'll tear down the inner southern wall, which made power slightly angry, so I'll pause research for a bit. Then make the power problems even worse by removing some solar panels to build more rail grid. A lot more rail grid. I'll also pump out as many robots as I have materials for to speed up the building process. Unfortunately, even with the new science trains, they still keep running out of fuel. Very annoying. Also, I think those brake upgrades were worth it. These trains can stop on a dime. There's a lot of trains running around that don't really need to be, so I'll change the drop-off stations for single-use items so the trains can wait there for longer. I've been playing this save for so long that Factorio actually had an update, so I had to roll back my game version to make sure my replay would still record. Which, very annoyingly, resets all of your achievements. So here's me getting a bunch of random achievements. To stop them from popping up, I will run an invalid Lua command to trick the game into thinking I cheated. Which will disable them. To make room for even more grid, I'll remove all the old mines. I'll rebuild them later. The bots are taking so long that I started to help out by hand as well. Now let's finally build that iron mine. Pretty simple as usual, but I don't have any balancers in my blueprint big enough, so we'll have to splice a few together. Yes, I know this is limiting throughput, and no, I do not care. Now for another slightly weird loading station that I totally didn't build backwards and had to fix. But it was smooth sailing after that. Then I set up the oil pumps again, and decided to paste an entire secondary oil refining setup to make travel times a bit shorter. Then after some more refueling stations, I'll build a new coal and copper mine. Back to work on logistics robotic science, and the end of the research tree looks deceptively close. With that science done, I'll research worker robot speed 3, then queue a few more levels. I decided to place yet another oil refinery setup. Worker robot speed 4. Now I'll queue research and productivity module 3s. Warfare Science finally got its first delivery of explosive rockets. I wonder how many hours that took. 
there's productivity module 3s, next for efficiency module 3s. Okay, back to actually making science again. Let's set up modern automation science, which takes electric engines and assembling machine 3s. I'll set up the science assemblers first, then the assemblers for being assembled into the science inside the science assemblers. Efficiency module 3s, now for rocket control units. After hand delivering a few of the assemblers, there's modern automation science. Next is effect transmission science, which takes beacons and one of each level 2 modules. I'll set up the level 2 modules first, and that's rocket control units. Now for worker robot cargo size, because I feel like it. There's speed module 2s, and after an accidental discharge, I'll copy it and make efficiency and productivity modules as well. We need beacons next, which are decently expensive and will need a two wide cell. I'll queue space rocketry science a bit early. But before we can set up beacons, we need to prepare a bit early for uranium science, which as you can probably guess from its name, takes process uranium. Since we don't have Kovarax enrichment yet, we'll stockpile the uranium-235 until we can unlock it. Man, I forgot how slow centrifuges are. There's space rocketry science, now for modern logistics, which needs logistics 3. Continuing with science, let's set up construction robotics science, which takes construction robots and roboports. Logistics 3. Now for modern logistics. With the science cell done, let's set up roboports a second time, because I totally didn't forget. Then construction robots. Modern logistics science. Now for everything at the beginning of the science menu. I'll also set up uranium science, but I won't make any delivery trains for it yet. Then on to making blue belts and splitters. Then the science. Next I'll do logistics robotics science, which takes logistics robots, passive provider, and storage chests. Then we randomly ran out of stone, so a bit of diplomacy later, here's our new stone mine. Once again, I'll splice it onto the iron mine tracks. Also productivity modules, because why not? There's coal liquefaction, now for fusion reactors. If you can't tell by now, I'm going to research everything. Actually, hold on, I should probably research Kovrax enrichment right now, so I can get a bit of a head start. Researching it takes a bit of uranium science, so I'll hand feed it, then chuck it into the labs. Almost an hour later, there we go. Now I'll start enriching. Is what I would say if I actually had enough uranium-238. I made some level 3 productivity modules to chuck into the labs, that should save us a ton of resources. After going back to the fusion and researching at 88 miles per hour, let's do lab research speed 6, night vision, belt immunity, energy shields, personal battery mark 2s, distractor, and military 4. Checking in on uranium, we finally have enough to kickstart enrichment. Then I checked in on iron production, we're in yet another shortage. There's another patch down to the left, so let's go get that. I'll also queue Annihilation Science for Spidertrons, because walking is for nerds. Although it will be a while until we can actually make it. Expanding is slow work, but we'll get there eventually. Since the second patch is pretty close, I'll enclose it too. There we go, fully enclosed. There's a rail to get the trains down there. Now all we need is the mines, which ended up being quite large, just like your mother. Then I'll build the loading stations. Hopefully now our iron problem should be gone, just like your father. Man, enrichment is slow. There's annihilation science. Time for more random crap. To kill some more time while we wait for science, I'll expand again so we can have a bit more room for solar. I'm going to start researching the nuclear reactor again. Maybe I'll actually finally build one. We're still waiting on uranium, which is slower than a cowboy riding a horse in a sea of molasses. I'll do another hand delivery. There's the reactor, some more laser shooting speed, nuclear fuel reprocessing, personal laser defense, and discharge defense. 
We've finally made some construction robotics science, so we can also research personal roboports. Which unlocks mobile roboport science. But then I remembered I never finished logistics robotics science. So after finishing the logistics chests, there's a cell for the science. Next up is annihilation science, which takes piercing shotgun shells and cluster grenades. First are regular shotgun shells. Easy peasy. And piercing shells are just as easy. Then cluster grenades, which are surprisingly expensive. Then finally, the science itself. Now for the ludicrously expensive mobile roboport science, which takes power armor and personal roboports. Well, first up is power armor, steel, blue circuits, and electric engines. Then personal roboports, which take four ingredients, so yet again, time for a two wide cell. And as always, there's the science. Now for rocket control units. We need them for, well, the rocket as usual, but we'll also need them for space rocketry science. Why is Compilatron in the enemies tab? He's so nice. Anyway, space rocketry science is basically just a rocket in a bottle. Low density structure, rocket control units, and rocket fuel. Even funnier is satellite science, which just takes a satellite and makes 200 science from it. The science is done, but I have a feeling we're going to have a major supply and demand problem with blue circuits. The refueling stations are starting to run dry. It looks like we ran out of coal. Time for yet another coal mine. Blue splitters finally got their first load of red splitters, so that's modern logistics science done. We also finally got a shipment of speed modules for effect transmission science. There's logistics system. Oil consumption has gotten quite unstable again, so it looks like it's time for more oil. Luckily, there's some right next to the rail down to the new iron patch. So many sciences done, yet there's still many more that we're waiting on. Like annihilation science, which just got its first shipment of items. And uranium science, which is still waiting on the super slow Kovrax enrichment process. Pub graphics clip in front of substations. Woob, please fix. I'll build some more rocket fuel production, because I'm definitely going to want nuclear fuel for the trains later. But for nuclear fuel, we're going to need a lot more uranium. So time to build a bigger and better uranium enrichment cell. After making sure my design worked, I scaled it up to full size. We're definitely going to need to mine some more uranium to keep up, so let's grab another patch of it. After building a new wall, I'll set up the mine. A quick look at the trains reveals that we also have a copper shortage, so I'll add a little bump to the wall here to get some more. The lower iron mine expansion somehow got partially disconnected from power, so I'll head down there and construct additional pylons. Then I'll finish the copper mine and set up some more ore delivery trains. Uranium enrichment is going pretty well, so I'll start setting up nuclear fuel production. Then I'll switch a few of the refueling station to use it instead of coal. I'll also build another enrichment cell. And another. Probably not the best idea, but whatever. Still waiting on research. We're being held back by mobile roboport science, which is still waiting on personal roboports. Rocket control units just got their first shipment of blue circuits. Why didn't I use productivity modules? There was a lot of robots chilling in storage from roboports getting deconstructed, so let's put them back into the system. Yeah, that's a lot of robots. Speaking of robots, finally, personal roboports. Now science can start again. There's personal roboport mark two. Next is destroyer. Man, we are so close to being done. Next is power armor mark two. And I'll make a suit as soon as it finishes. Also, most of the trains are running on nuclear fuel now, which is nice. With all that extra space, time for even more exoskeletons. Eight should be plenty. Whee! 
Uranium ammo. Now for artillery. We're starting to have throughput problems from the sheer amount of science going into the labs. So I'll upgrade it to blue belts. Also, never mind on the artillery, let's research the rocket first, since it might take a while to build one. Now I'll set up uranium ammo for modern military science, which also needs to destroy our capsules, so I'll automate those too. Later, we'll also need to make artillery shells, which take explosive explosives, explosive artillery shells, and radars. So I'll set those up as well. Now, where should I put the rocket silo? I think here's a good spot. There's the silo. Let's make one and save some space for the satellites. There's artillery, which I've already set up some totally overkill production for. Now for space science, so we can finally unlock the satellite and satellite science. Now let's set up the silo, double wide since we need three ingredients and the satellite. Should be easy enough, but I don't have quite enough concrete on hand. Also, don't forget the productivity modules. Now we need to set up satellite production, which takes one, two, three, four, five, six ingredients. So we'll actually need to make even more room than I was expecting. Our first three wide cell. Super easy to set up, but man, these belts are comically long. Then we'll also need a cell for satellite science. Super, super easy. Oil is on the drop again, so I'll add some speed modules to improve production. You may be wondering how many signs per minute this base makes. Unfortunately, I don't have a concrete number for you, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's around 20 signs per minute, which is terrible, but I've seen worse. There's another oil patch to the west, and since I'm just standing around waiting for research, might as well go get it. I'll plug it into the lower pickup. Still waiting on science, so let's set up coal liquefaction. Why not? Just for fun. After grabbing some heavy oil to kickstart it, there's coal liquefaction. For no reason. I'll add some beacons to it just for fun, and right here is where space science finished off camera. Now for modern military science. We can also start making satellites, if we had rocket fuel. The science loading setup is working fine, but I think we could increase the throughput just a bit more. Using one signal to control the filter inserters limits us to four items at a time. So instead, we can split up the inserters into four item sections and give each of them their own set of signals. This greatly increases throughput and arguably looks cooler too. There's modern military science. Now for the Spidertron, because I want one. Modern military science was a breeze to set up, and I've never actually tried distractor or destroyer capsules before. So I'll take them for a spin real quick. Distractors are cool, but they don't last very long. And destroyers seem like they could be cool if I had a bunch more energy weapons damage. Here's our first batch of modern military science. There's the Spidertron. Next up is artillery science. And after that, I'll do two more levels of follower robot count to unlock the infinite variant. Then I'll set up artillery science, which takes artillery turrets and artillery ammo. Iron supply is slowly dropping, but it should hopefully last until the end of the run. The base has gotten a lot more active, so I need to build even more refueling stations. Speaking of fuel, rocket fuel production is super slow. I'll build some more. There's follower robot count five. One more level to go. Looking at the trains, I was definitely wrong about iron. We need more. Just a tad southwest of the uranium patch, there's a big old patch of iron, so I'll surround that. There's follower robot count six. Now for satellite science, which takes 4,000 of each science. 
this is going to take a while. Once I finished surrounding the iron patch, I built the mine and then ran the ore directly up into the pre-existing mine so I don't have to build another set of stations. Might as well do it for this copper patch right next to it, and I'll plug it in the same way. Now we wait. Satellite production is up and running now, and two hours later, I finally get around to making a Spider-Tron. Then I noticed the rocket was actually ready for takeoff, so I hopped over there and launched it. Technically, that's the end of the run, but there's still more to do. I want to do at least one level of Follower Robot Count's infinite research, since that will use every single science at the same time. Two sciences to go. There's my Spider-Tron. I think I'll name him... Spider-Tron. Now I won't get hit by trains anymore, but I don't move quite as fast. Oh well. Since I've got nothing better to do, I'll just run around with Spider-Tron the Spider-Tron and expand the walls again, just for fun. After doing that, I'll put a mine on this new copper patch, which almost doubled our output. Atomic Bomb is finally done. I'll schedule satellite science, which surprisingly doesn't take very long. Now I'll start making satellite science, which has a brutally long 800 second craft time. Over 10 minutes. But eventually, there it is. And once it shows up to the lab, that's officially every single science. Now let's use all of them one last time. And that's it. That's all 43 science packs. It only took 237 trains, 985 stations, and almost 140 hours, but we're finally done. I'd like to thank my supporters on Kofi. Their contributions let me spend an exorbitant amount of time artistically articulating videos just like these. And that's all for today. My name's Doc Jade. Bye bye.